time to do a little bit of barrel work. Hi, my name is Jim Green and I'm a gunsmith. The name of my shop is Gunworks, in the town of Millbridge, Maine. Today's video, we're going to take a barrel blank, put it in the lathe, we're going to turn a shank and we're going to cut thread so we can uh, fit this thing to the action. What I'm going to do is we're going to copy this barrel contour right here. Just this shank and these threads. Now I don't have CNC lathe equipment, so what we've done is we've sent this original barrel off to Patnor. Patnor copied the outside dimensions of it. This rifle is in an 8mm Mauser, <clears throat> and this is actually for a Hungarian M43. A uh, fellow we're doing this rifle for ended up, his uh, one of his relatives brought this thing back from World War II. He decided he wanted to sporterize it. Well, normally I'm against sporterizing any kind of guns like that, but since this has already been chopped up and butchered in the past, decided, well, it's worthwhile. He doesn't want it in 8mm Mauser anymore, so now we're going to do it in 308 Winchester. What we're going to do today is we're going to copy the diameter of the shank and this thread pitch. Alright, so what I've done is I took the three jaw chuck out and we have the four jaw chuck in. There again, uh, three jaw chuck is a scroll, four jaw chuck is independent. What I mean by scroll, so each one of these little uh, bolts right here, you turn with the wrench on a scroll chuck, that means they all move in at the same time together. On a four jaw, each one of these, especially an independent four jaw, each one of these has a bolt right here. You turn that individual bolt, just that jaw moves in and out only. Let me show you how close we got the tolerances on this one so far. If you look really careful, you'll notice we're turning about a half of a thousand. I'm going to show you what we do back here in the back part of the lathe. All right, this is a gunsmithing lathe with a large spindle bore. Let's open this up. What I've done is I've put these little uh, bolts back here in place. These are called spiders. What that does is you put a dial indicator back here and you get all this nice and lined up so that the back part of your barrel is turning uh, true also, just like the front. The first thing I'm going to do before I start cutting the shank diameter is I'm going to face this off. Because on the back of it down here, you'll see a few little numbers. I don't want those numbers in there. Plus, I want to make sure it's nice and clean inside. Let's go ahead and get started. chips coming off of there now. Nice little chips coming off. So we already got the face turned and uh, now we're turning down the side dimensions of this thing. Shank cut and get ready to start cutting threads. And have a look. Well, like I said earlier, you're hogging this stuff out. You want to take a pretty big bite out of it because getting everything hogged down uh, close to the final dimension and stuff, that's going to be your best bet. 
far as uh, making a little bit of money on machine work. So don't be afraid to take a big bite out of it. As long as the machine will handle it and you're not uh, tearing anything up, I'll take a pretty good chunk off of it. Looks like we're down to our size. Okay, so let's get ready. Uh, we're going to take our measurements off of here. We'll get ready to start uh, shortening the shank to this length, this other one up here, and we'll set up and thread. Okay, we switched out to the threader bit, and we're going to set this at 29 and a half degrees. Extra compound slide. So what we have now at this point, we've got the threading bit set up to cut our little 60 degree V threads. Now make sure you watch the second part of the video, part two, where we go back and we start changing the gears down here and determine the thread pitch. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching this latest video. Down East Gunworks is now shifting towards building custom rifles. What you see in this video interests you or if you have a special project in mind, contact the shop through Jim at DowneastGunworks.com. And a special thanks to the folks that contributed to this project.